This video is going to take you through some of the important chemical bonds that you need to know about in biological molecules. The first type of bond is a strong covalent bond that forms between two molecules to form a new molecule. These covalent bonds are very hard to break. That's the key thing that you need to understand. Covalent bonds that you must know the names of are glycosidic bonds between two carbohydrates, ester bonds between a fatty acid and a glycerol, a peptide bond between two amino acids, a disulfide bridge which is found in the tertiary structure of a protein, and also covalent bonds formed between the nucleotides in the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA. Another type of bond that's important is a weak hydrogen bond. Now hydrogen bonds are very important in water and also in other biological molecules. So you need to have a polar molecule where one atom is more electronegative than the other and this gives us a partial, pos partial negative charge um, and the electropositive atom has a partial positive charge. These are weak bonds. This just goes through some of the um, biological molecules where hydrogen bonding is important. Ionic bonds, um, positive and negative ions, the bond is the attraction between the positive and negative charges and the ionic bonds are very easily broken by changes in pH. Hydrophobic interactions, they're not really bonds but they're the way a pro um, usually a protein will fold if it's in a hydrophilic um, environment, for example in water, it will fold so that the hydrophobic R groups are away from the water and the hydrophilic R groups will be attracted towards the water so that determines the shape of the protein. We'll now go through the covalent bonds again but in more detail looking at the specific examples that you have to know. Okay so we'll go back to covalent bonds and the, the named covalent bonds that you must know. If we start off with the glycosidic bond, which it forms between two monosaccharides. Okay, when you have two carbohydrates together, two monosaccharides such as alpha glucose, they can join together by a condensation reaction which involves the removal of water. This forms a glycosidic bond, which is a strong covalent bond. The two groups that react are the two OH groups. So this shows the parts of the molecule that react together to form, form the water and the O that's left um, forms part of the glycosidic bond. This O here is now here. A disaccharide can also be broken back down into its monosaccharides by a hydrolysis reaction this involves the addition of water, which can break the glycosidic bond and reforms the OH groups. As you can see here, here are your OH groups. Many alpha glucose molecules can join together in a long chain to form amylose or starch. This involves many, many condensation reactions and many glycosidic bonds, as you can see here. These are all strong covalent glycosidic bonds formed by condensation reactions. Now once the um, polysaccharide chain of amylose has been formed, um, the chain then coils into a, into a helix shape and this involves other bonds. This involves weak hydrogen bonds and it's due to the interactions between the OH groups and the H groups on the glucose molecules. The red lines here show the hydrogen bonds holding it into this helix shape and this helix shape means that the chain becomes a very compact molecule which means it doesn't take up much space inside the cell which is very important because amylose is a storage polysaccharide in a plant cell. It's a store of glucose so by forming these long chains and coiling them up into a smaller shape they don't take up so much room. Glycogen is another polysaccharide that is made up of many alpha-glucose monomers, 
all held by glycosidic bonds that have been formed by condensation reactions. But glycogen is slightly different because it has branches and side chains. And these side chains are also gly glycosidic bonds. Um, now the glycogen molecule, it means that it's, um, it forms like a, a brush shape almost. Um, and there's lots of free ends for the hydrolysis of the glucose molecule. This releases glucose very quickly and glucose can then be used in respiration to provide ATP. This is important because glycogen is a storage polysaccharide in animals and animals are very active, therefore they have a high demand for energy, so therefore they need a fast rate of respiration. So being able to release glucose very quickly enables that high rate of respiration. And cellulose is another polysaccharide that you need to know about. It is a structural polysaccharide that forms the plant cell wall and as a result it needs to be a very strong molecule. Cellulose is made up of long straight chains of beta-glucose monomers. These chains are long and straight because of the beta-glucose. It's got a slightly different st structure to alpha-glucose and as a result each beta-glucose monomer is alternately flipped and this makes the chain very straight. Many beta-glucose chains then um, join together um, by many hydrogen bonds and when you've got these very long molecules with many 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 hydrogen bonds although each hydrogen bond is weak because there's so many of them it forms a very strong structure so you have many beta-glucose chains all held by covalent glycosidic bonds between the beta-glucose monomers but each chain is then held next to other chains by lots and lots of hydrogen bonds and these form structures called microfibrils and it's many microfibrils that will then form the cellulose cell wall. Polypeptides are polymers which are made up of long chains of amino acids. Two amino acids can join together by a condensation reaction um, to produce a dipeptide plus water. This time the groups that react are the OH group on the carboxylic acid end and one of the hydrogens on the amino group. This forms water and a peptide bond. The peptide bond is here. Dipeptides can also be broken back into their amino acids by a hydrolysis reaction. This involves adding water to break the peptide bond and it reforms the carboxylic acid group and the amino group. So here's my peptide bond, here's my water, the water reacts and it breaks the peptide bond and we have our OH and H reformed here. Now a polypeptide or a protein is just a very long chain of amino acids and each amino acid is held by a peptide bond. This is called the primary structure of the protein. Each protein will have a different primary structure because it will have a different sequence of amino acids and because there's 20 different amino acids that we can find in a protein then there's a great variety of primary structures that we can have. Once the polypeptide chain has been formed, the chain then starts to fold into other structures. And the secondary structure of the protein is where the protein folds, or the protein chain folds into either an alpha helix shape or a beta pleated sheet shape. Now these shapes are due to hydrogen bonds that form within the chain. The protein can then fold further and this is where we get the big variety in protein structure and function because of the variety of R groups due to the different numbers of amino acids and the fact that they can be placed in any sequence in the primary structure. So as the polypeptide chain forms, the protein will start to fold into all sorts of different shapes due to the interactions between these R groups or variable groups. 
one bond that's important in the tertiary structure is a disulfide bridge. And this is a strong covalent bond between two um, amino acids that contain sulfur. This is usually cysteine, but there's a disulfide bridge. Other interactions that are important in the tertiary structure are hydrogen bonds that can form between R groups and ionic bonds that can form between R groups. Finally, we can have hydrophobic interactions where R groups that are repelled by water will move away from hydrophilic environments and alter the way the protein folds to give it its overall shape. Now lipids are another type of biological molecule. The most common one that you need to know about is a triglyceride. And a triglyceride is formed from one molecule of glycerol, here, and three fatty acids. Here's one fatty acid, two fatty acid, and three fatty acid. Now a fatty acid is a long chain, hydrocarbon chain with an acid group on the end. So that's the COOH here. And although fatty acids can have different lengths and they could be saturated or unsaturated, you can see here these are all different lengths, so different numbers of CH2 groups in the chain. They all have the carboxylic acid group at the end. When they react with glycerol, the reaction is between the OH group on the glycerol and the OH group on the carboxylic acid and it is the water here that's eliminated and the oxygen will now join to the carbon there. The bond between a fatty acid and glycerol is called an ester bond. You can see the ester bonds circled in red. Now one final important point about um, triglycerides is that triglycerides are not polymers because polymer means many and polymers tend to be long chains made up of you know many hundreds of monomers that are just repeating subunits. In a triglyceride you've only got three fatty acids joined to one glycerol therefore it's not made up of many repeating subunits so a triglyceride is not a polymer. Now a final type of biological molecule where you need to know about bonding is in DNA. Now DNA is a polynucleotide. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and it is a polynucleotide because it's made up of many, many nucleotides joined together by, you've guessed it, condensation reactions forming strong covalent bonds between the nucleotides. When two nucleotides join together, the covalent bond forms between the phosphate group of one nucleotide and the carbon of the deoxyribose sugar of another nucleotide. Now you don't need to know how this bond forms. You don't need to know what, about the um, parts of the molecule that react together, but you must know it is a strong covalent bond. And we refer to this bond between the phosphates and the sugars as the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA molecule. So this shows three nucleotides that have been joined together by strong covalent bonds forming the sugar phosphate backbone. You can see that the, um, the nitrogenous bases all point out in one direction. So these are the nitrogenous bases. These bases are attracted to other bases um, on other strands of DNA and this is called complementary base pairing. We've got four different bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. And adenine forms hydrogen bonds with thymine and cytosine forms hydrogen bonds with guanine. Here you can see the hydrogen bonds in red. 
Um, there are differences between them. A to T has two hydrogen bonds, whereas C and G have three hydrogen bonds. And again, because um, hyd although hydrogen bonds are very weak individually, because DNA is a very long molecule, there will be lots and lots of hydrogen bonds. So overall, this will form a very stable structure. To finish, here is a summary of the bonds that you need to know. Some exam questions. Um, found in plant cells, well I know that starch is the storage polysaccharide in plants. Um, I know that starch is a polysaccharide, therefore it must contain glycosidic bonds. But I also know that the monomer of starch is alpha-glucose. Cellulose forms the plant cell wall. It also contains glycosidic bonds because it's a long chain of beta-glucose of beta held by glycosidic bonds and the monomer is beta-glucose. Glycogen, though, is the storage polysaccharide in animal cells, so this must be no. But it is a polysaccharide formed of alpha-glucose joined by many glycosidic bonds, and it is alpha-glucose, so that will be a cross. And I know that joining these polysaccharides together is a condensation reaction, and the reaction that breaks them back down is hydrolysis. Oh, as long as you've learnt your biological molecules, these questions should be very straightforward. You should know that the bond between two monosaccharides is going to be a glycosidic bond. Um, you should know that it's beta-glucose that forms cellulose. And you should also know that here is going to be um, an OH group because that's the end of the chain and on, a, on most glucoses the o, it's the OH group. Now this question requires a little bit more thought. When you look at this you've got to look for the clues in the question. Here it clearly tells you carbon, hydrogen and oxygen so straight away that should tell you it's a carbohydrate and out of these substances here you know that starch is a carbohydrate because it's a polysaccharide and you know that glycogen is a carbohydrate because it is, um, again, a polysaccharide. You might need to think about that one. Deoxyribose is a sugar. It's a five-carbon sugar found in DNA. So again, it's a carbohydrate. Amino acid monomers, that should tell you straight away it's a protein. Now, that means that it can't be starch, it can't be glycogen, it can't be deoxyribose, but DNA helicase is an enzyme, and you should know that all enzymes are proteins, and therefore they must be made from amino acid monomers. Finally, found in animal cells and plant cells. Well, you know starch is a storage polysaccharide in plants. You know Glycogen is a storage polysaccharide in animals. You know that this forms part of DNA, which must be found in both plants and animals, in all living things. And also DNA helicase, you should know, is needed for the replication of DNA. So again, that should be found in both plant and animal cells. Another question here box around the atoms that are removed when the glucose molecules are joined. So we are looking for water to be removed. This one, you should know the structure of an amino acid, so you should be able to identify this as the R group. You should be able to identify the amino group and know that hydrogen from the amino group is involved in condensation reaction when amino acids join together, and also the OH group of the carboxylic acid group, again needed for the condensation reaction. You should know that when two amino acids join together, it's going to form a dipeptide. 
and it's also going to form water, which is what students often forget about. And the type of bond formed between the pair of amino acid molecules is a peptide, of course. Finally, this question expects you to be able to um, look at a number of different amino um, biological molecules. Um, process involved in the linkage of bond B here, it's going to be condensation. Give the letter of the linkage which occurs in a triglyceride molecule. Well, you should know the structure of the ester bond. Might be broken down by the enzyme amylase. Well, amylase breaks down starch into, into maltose. So that involves breaking glycosidic bonds. I can see a glycosidic bond here. And may occur in the tertiary, but not the primary structure of a protein. Well, I know that any strong covalent bond in the tertiary structure of a protein is going to be a disulfide bridge.